Hi guys, finally there's a second part. So welcome back to the second part of this fall festival where we are going to look back on everything that has happened in the first round and we're gonna see how the other stories unfold. Part one started with a quick tour of the town square and Roland and Rosa's first date. So if you haven't seen that one yet, be sure to check it out. It's on my channel and in the Cherry Blossom Springs playlist. Now without further ado, let's see what else is going to happen during the festivities of this day. On the other side of the town square, a little bit later, we see Reginald, the town's priest, and Sophie, the librarian. We've met these two sins in episode 11, where we saw that Reginald is the local priest, who is a knowledge sin, and who is really here to leave a legacy in this town. In order for that, he of course needs a family, and he asked out Sophie, the local librarian. She was a bit hesitant at first, but they went for a bite to eat at the local diner after studying all day at the library together. They had a nice first date at this bar, and since this evening they've had a crush on each other. We saw them ending the date with a tender kiss at the door, which is where we left them. The part we didn't see yet was that the next day Reginald called her and invited her to his home. They wanted to cook her dinner and spend a nice evening together without anyone else around. Now, Reginald is one of the older sims in town. He was 43 years old at the beginning of this round and Sophie was 25. After observing her at the library where he comes daily to study, he could really see from up close how she interacted with all of the other visitors and how she carried herself. And he really liked her gentle but reserved personality. And of course they spent that evening together where they've gotten to know each other pretty well. He believes that Sophie wants the same things out of life as he does. I think for her everything in life is about books, knowledge and learning something new every day. She looks up to Reginald, mainly because he is a lot older and has more life experience, but also because he has an amazing ability to speak in public and to really move the people that he talks to. So, as you can see, it didn't take them long to fall in love with each other. As far as Reginald is concerned, they are perfect for each other. He believes that Sophie has the same values and beliefs. So, in his eye, that means she will be a perfect wife for him. Not only for running the traditional household together that he is longing for, but also for public appearances and to make his position in this town even better. Part of his affection for her is also caused by her admiration of him. He likes that a beautiful girl, younger than him, with a bright mind, seems to look up to him. Reginald knows he is not getting any younger, and since this evening he has had the wish to get engaged to Sophie, and he thought the upcoming festival would be the perfect place and time to ask her to marry him. So let's hurry back to the town square and see if she says yes. Oh, oh, Father Silo. Oh, oh Weevo. <laughs> she of course said yes, and I'm pretty sure that we are going to have our first wedding at the church very soon. At the same time, right behind Reginald and Sophie and their happy moment, we can see Therese playing with the toddlers. She runs the orphanage and the daycare center, and we have seen her shortly in episode 7 about the school system. In the first round, she really had her hands full on taking care of the toddlers and working as a social worker at the town hall. So we haven't seen that much of her yet, even though she could become a really interesting character. She did spend a lot of time talking to Vernon during the only social event that she went to, which was the party at Jason Hobson's house. But I'm not sure where this is going to lead yet, because he is not attracted to her, and he flirted with Linda at another party, and is otherwise very very shy, so I am not sure that he is going to take any action. She did however become good friends with him, and she has the wish to ask someone out. So who knows, but we will have to wait until winter and round 2 to see what's going to happen with her. So let's move on to the person that she is talking to, Rocco Kalida, the local fireman. And for those of you that have seen the last episode before this festival, do you remember what happened? That horrible day that you wouldn't wish on anyone? Let's take a quick look at that scene. There we go. Now he wants to... Who's that? Who is interrupting 
the date. Oh my god, it's Jonathan. <laughs> Rocco and Jonathan have a crush on each other, and I guess Jonathan noticed that uh, Rocco went into a Ra Ramon's house. Oh my god, that is so not... That is that is so rude! <laughs> that is so rude! Oh my god! As one of my viewers pointed out to me, that horrified scream at the end of it, it just really says it all, doesn't it? And I'm not even sure if it's okay to laugh this hard about your own videos. <laughs> but that is one of the things that I love most about this game. That after all these years, these sims can still surprise me and can still make me laugh. So when I summoned Rocco to this lot this morning and I saw the ones that he rolled after that horrible date, I just had to cheat in a second lock to keep them both in. Because it is just a perfect explanation for who Rocco is. And I think because of these two new ones, I have finally figured Rocco out. I think Rocco is this really naive, innocent, lovable and outgoing personality who wants to please everyone and avoids conflict. And he is very indecisive. He is the kind of person that when asked where do you want to go for dinner, answers I don't know, where do you want to go? He always goes out of his way to avoid any kind of conflict, even of the smallest kind. Jonathan really is head over heels for Rocco, he can't think of anything else. And as you look closely in the background, he is talking to Therese about maybe even adopting one of the toddlers. So he has big plans. So we are left with Rocco wanting to both fall in love with Ramon and get engaged to Jonathan. And he seems to want these things because that is what they want and he doesn't want to let them down. He is also the kind of person that once he starts talking, he just never stops. He can talk to anyone at any time about anything and he does. <laughs> he is one of those people that once you start a conversation, you just cannot get out of it. He just keeps going and he is in a constantly outgoing and talkative mood. We can also see that by all of the other households that he has been calling to talk. But he is just so innocent and lovable and he has a heart of gold that you just cannot help but like him. Also, when I saw that his zodiac sign is a Libra, and Libras are generally known for their indecisiveness, well, it all just tied in perfectly with his personality. So switching over to Ramon, he is quite the influential person in this town. At the beginning of this round he was 43 years old, so that makes him 48 now. His first round has really been all about settling into this town, because he came here to help develop the commercial area around the town square. The way that he is going to do that is that the mayor has made him chairman of the commercial committee and in future rounds his days are mostly going to be filled with meetings and network events. As chairman of the commercial committee he is in charge of making decisions about how this town is going to develop. Of course everything has to be approved by the city council, but more about that later. We saw the first meeting of this committee in episode 11, where they have yet to come to a decision about what new stores they want to develop in the coming season. And the way that I approach that is actually something new that I am trying out in this new neighborhood and I have never done before. I'm using the thought bubbles of The Sims to find out where their preferences lie and of course that is a little bit open to interpretation so I can play with that. But I'm loving how that works so far. Now I'm not using any mods to influence their thought bubbles so it is all completely random and according to their memories and interests. It's just one of those new ways of playing that has made it so much fun to try out this new much less control freak style of play because in my previous neighborhood Everything revolved around me loving to plan and control everything, even up to planning marriages for sims that hadn't been even born yet. And although that has always been a fun way to play for me, I'm really loving this more random play too and letting the sims surprise me. It is one of my wishes for this new year to be able to tell you all about that old neighborhood called Simsville on this channel. Hopefully that will be in the near future. I've been working out ways to best share those 17 years worth of history and it's starting to come together. But for now, let's go back to the fall festival and before we see what happens to the other sims that are attending, first, let me take you through some of the mechanics of the lot and the finances that are involved. Technically, the mayor is the owner of this lot, 
But story-wise, of course the town hall is the owner, and should there ever be another mayor, the lot would be transferred to that sim. So this lot is located in the middle of the town square, and I really wanted it to sort of look like the town square in Ghost Whisperer or Gilmore Girls, where there is a little park surrounded by all the local shops and where all of the neighbors meet each other daily. So that means that the seasonal decorations that you see are temporary, and that the essence of the lot is here to stay throughout the year. The stalls that you see are built with the town's money, and therefore all the income is going to the town hall. That's why Adriana is working the cash register, and since she is the owner of this lot, she is making money with the profits from the stalls. At the end of the day, the profits of this day go straight into her bank account, which means that it is going into the town hall's fund. This way, at the end of the season, we can actually calculate the profits of this festival. On the left side, you can see that Daniel is standing the bar, which takes care of drinks and entertainment. He is actually generating some income for the lot this way, as you can see by the numbers above his head. Now, I didn't want to bother with bladder and energy needs, and I did slow down time with the time clock. Plus, most of the sims took quite a few drinks at the bar, so every few hours I just filled up the energy and the bladder bars, mostly because there's a public toilet right around the corner, so it felt realistic to do that, and at least more time to enjoy the spontaneous actions from the sims themselves. Else. Like right here, where Adriana decided to publicly kiss Daniel and they fell in love. Other than that, the sims on this lot behave just as they would on any other sim-owned community lot. They complain to the owner when there are empty plates laying around, and they leave when their needs aren't met. So Adriana has to deal with that too, between keeping this festival run smoothly. The gardener's stall is really simple. Sims that buy flowers from his stall tell me which households are going to hire Rick to design their gardens and keep their gardens in the future. Moving over to Natasha. We already know that she sells homemade cakes, muffins and wedding cakes. And the sims that take those home are going to of course eat those or use them in their wedding because I think we have a few of those coming up. After this day, the stall owners get to take home the restocked items so they can sell them in their own shops. But all the decorations that are used go straight to the town hall's storage facilities, so we can use them next year. Next on the list is Robin. She is the town's carpenter, and she is here to talk about the furniture that she makes. Take some requests for designs, and similar to Rick's stall in the background, Sims that buy an item here are going to take her woodworking classes in the near future, and she is going to earn some extra income when they do. And it looks like Vern might be interested in taking a woodworking class. I can totally see him do that. <laughs> and of course we have Jonathan, who owns a clothing store in the town square. And uh, he's here to sell some autumn or winter clothing. His love life is very complicated at the moment, which we will see when we get to his episode. Um, he lives together with his brother Daniel. Jonathan is a pleasure sim, Daniel is a romance sim. And they are uh, not only brothers, but uh, really close friends. Always have been since they were little. Jonathan came to Cherry Blossom Springs to pursue his dreams in fashion. And we will see if he is going to be successful at it in one of the upcoming episodes where we will see life from his perspective. The next one is something that is going to have a lot more meaning in the future seasons, because here we sell second-hand items. And since we are in the first round now and households are still very, very basic, we just have a small assortment of old memorabilia here. Behind this table is Lorraine. The mayor has asked her to stand close to the entrance and greet everyone that comes in, because she knows Lorraine will do anything she can to make others feel good. She really is the life of the party everywhere she goes. And in the first round, we've seen her fall in love with Jason Hobson, who's in the background here on the treadmill. They met each other a few times at the community center that she runs, and after she went to the party at his home, he asked her out, and uh, they went to the bakery to get a cup of coffee. They talked about their lives and their desires. Now, Jason is a divorced and single father of a teenage son, Ricky. He has traveled the world and seen a lot in his job as a reporter. And Lorraine just got straight out of college and came to Cherry Blossom Springs to start her life. But they do seem compatible. And at the end of this date, they did both fall in love with each other. So we, we have another couple and uh, we are going to see them try and merge their lives together in the winter season. Like I mentioned, Jason is the local reporter and uh, runs the local newspaper, or is going to run the local newspaper in the future. He offered to take pictures at the festival and write about it in that local newspaper. I have to admit that I completely forgot about it, so I haven't taken that many pictures. That's really a shame because it's such a fun thing to do in The Sims 2. Uh, we are sure going to uh, do more with that in the next festival. 
We have almost reached the end of the afternoon part of this video and there are actually some more activities and evening entertainment planned for this day. But before we get to that later in this video, there are two highlights of this specific season since this is the harvest season. So the first one is Roland's stall. In the first part of the festival we've seen that he sells his vegetables here, but there is a little bit more of a background and an economic system behind that, which involves quite a bit of micromanaging, but I for one really love that. Stuff like that is what really makes this town realistic and fun to play for me but if you don't like those mechanics feel free to skip over this part of the video so what i did was i set up a trading system between different businesses in town roland is producing vegetables the grocery store and the bar are going to buy those directly from roland and in turn, they sell or deliver food and groceries to the Sims personally or to their households. For example, Gordon is going to own a grocery store, but Sims can also call him to deliver groceries to their home. Just like they would in a normal base game, but this way there won't be any random Sims as an NPC delivery guy. And a funny thing happened when I was filming the last day of Roland's Harvest. He was uh, working on his last plants and I already had this idea in mind for him to sell everything uh, or at least most of his crops to Gordon during the festival and then Gordon actually called him and they had a long conversation I think they were talking about the deal but uh, <laughs> they mentioned money a lot of times so uh, yeah that, that worked out perfectly and it's, it's funny how uh, how things just uh, came together like this. So moving back to the festival, here we see Roland and Gordon making their deal. And the festival is actually a perfect place for Roland to uh, make these deals because Technically, I have all of the sims selected, not for the entire festival, but for part of the festival. So it's easy to make these kind of exchanges. The only thing that I need to do is make some notes so I can be sure that they transfer the right amount to Roland after the festival when they come back home and when they are at their computer. I'm using Monique's hacked computer for that, of course. So it's not an actual gift as it might seem in the clip. They, uh, they do have to pay for it, but it's a good deal. And for me, this was just such an essential part of this integrated neighborhood that it really became kind of the foundation of uh, setting up this town. Speaking of an integrated neighborhood and developing this town, we haven't really seen Kristoff yet. Kristoff is the contractor who built most of the buildings in this town. We've seen him in the introductions when we moved in the first eight male sims and he will return in the episode about all of the pleasure and romance sims because those connections are starting to become quite complicated, especially with Kristoff being bisexual and having more options than my mind can process right now. <laughs> Luckily, he spent most of the first season studying because he doesn't really have the necessary skills yet to be in the profession that he is in and that his parents put him in, kind of in a privileged position. So he is at the festival to talk about the town development. The second highlight that I wanted to share with you before we are actually going to jump into the evening activities is Valentina Nightingale. Now her stall is really special for this season because it will be here only once. Uh, in every season we will have one stall that is specific to the storyline of that season and uh, this time it's Valentina and Lizzie's decoration stall. They started their business from home. Um, Valentina's husband and Lizzie's father recently died and they are looking for a way to build their lives again. The way that they're going to do that is they're going to open up a shop in the town center and this will probably be one of the center points of this town. And once we have the decoration shop, Valentina is also the interior stylist. So we can finally start decorating all these houses and there will be a dedicated separate series where we will decorate all of the houses in this neighborhood together, one by one, room by room, but uh, eventually we will get there. Now Valentina hasn't really been doing very well. She's been aspiration failing all over town and uh, that has made for some funny scenes like this one. But of course we want her to do better and to find a husband because uh, even after such a tragic loss she just wants to rebuild her life again and uh, remarry, maybe even have more children. And during their break, Valentina and Kristoff seem to uh, run into each other and uh, kind of hit it off. Now, I am not sure if they are right for each other, but they would make for quite an interesting couple seeing their uh, personalities. Also, I know that Dasha and Gordon flirting in the background. It's like she was really nice to him, thanking him for his help and everything. And he totally took it the wrong way and thought that she was hitting on him. So he now has a crush on her and she does not have a crush on him. <laughs> In the meantime, it's approaching dinner time 
and I think it is time to uh, let Therese take the toddlers home and start preparing for the big evening dinner. And as you might expect from a harvest festival, part of this harvest was donated to prepare a huge feast for all of the visitors so they can all share a meal together. Of course Daniel is doing the catering and we can see that he has already started serving the food together with the help from a few volunteers. Also, this gives us the chance to just sit back, relax and watch what the Sims are going to do on their own. Because after a long day of micromanaging, I think we kind of deserve that. And I don't even know how I organized these parties in the past where I didn't even have a Sim Blender. Because that is of course how this whole day came together. I used the Sim Blender to uh, summon all of the Sims in town to this lot. And then I made most of them selectable to, uh, well, to start a few things off and then I made them unselectable and uh, let them go their merry way and see what happens. And I might have lowered their social needs just a few times to, uh, to get the social interactions going. But other than that, I didn't really cheat and I left most of the things up to chance. Apart from of course some storyline events and the fulfilling of some wishes. So at the end of this first round, we see that 12 out of the first 24 sims have found a partner. The other 12 are still single and some of them might stay that way. Even though the pleasure and romance sims can be very fun too, we really need those families to get the second generation of this town going, but also to have more diverse stories for the next round. There will be the moving in of couples, wedding parties, and I wouldn't be surprised if we would even see a divorce or two in the future. I may sound sweet, but I do like to let my sims go through the occasional drama every now and then. Speaking of drama, in the next season we will also have to figure out what to do with Jason's ex-wife. Remember that she barged in on the night that Lorraine went to Jason's party? Of course, Jason's ex-wife is also connected to Eduardo. The one in the red suit that you see here just becoming best friends with Vernon the doctor. He is of course a local banker and the town's treasurer, so he will have a great relationship with the mayor because he will speak to her daily. In the next episode where we are going to take a look at the town hall and the town's finances, we are definitely going to see more of him. And I think I've heard Cindy from Pleasant Sims say that she got stuck with Edgewood because the banker was so hard to work into an integrated neighborhood and I can totally see why that would be. I love that series by the way. <laughs> and I'm still hoping that someday it will continue. It's a bit of a challenge to find something that feels realistic and actually adds something to the neighborhood. And I guess we'll know soon enough if this is going to work in this neighborhood in the way that I really wanted it to. Anyway, if you can handle a little bit more romance for now, I think I just saw Jason and Lorraine sneaking off together to a more quiet spot. Now for the last part of this festival, we have the nightly entertainment and the mayor arranged for Daniel to give a concert because in his younger years, he was actually quite the pianist. He doesn't really do anything with that anymore. He owns the bar, he owns a catering company, his hobby is arts and crafts and he bakes pottery. I'm still not sure if that's fitting for his character, but he does. <laughs> And uh, tonight he is going to uh, his previous passion that he shared with his brothers, music. And he is going to perform for the entire town just this once as, uh, as a gift to the new town. And I think this has to be my favorite part of the entire festival. The evening with the music where so many things are happening at once. Stanley and Robin are falling in love. Everyone is... Uh, entering the slow dancing competition, Jonathan is making drinks, Melissa is having fun at the bar. Rocco is, Rocco is wandering around and like seeing who he can talk to now and everybody's just having fun. The mayor is overseeing it all and uh, seeing if there is uh, something that she needs to do or to uh, check if there are people that need anything. Ramon is getting his drinks. Yeah, this is definitely the favorite, my favorite part of this entire festival. There we see Roland and Rosa. 
and the background you can see that Kristoff and Valentina have been talking to each other almost the entire night. <laughs> I shouldn't give this away, but <laughs> at the end of the festival I was trying to send everyone home and I realized that they were stuck on their chairs. So it might not be because they were so interested in each other. <laughs> it might have been because I took the chairs away from the table before uh, taking them off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Daniel is playing his music and a little bit away from everyone else, Ricky and Lizzie are talking to each other. They really have found a good friend in each other and uh, again they are talking about traveling the world, what they will do after their studies. Next season they are going to go to college and after that, after school is done, uh, after they can start their lives. Who knows what is in store for them. I'm really curious to see how they are going to grow up. So we really have almost reached the end of the evening with just a few more minutes of this video to go. I wanted to have some sort of competition element on this day, on every festival day actually. And for other seasons I have some nice ideas for that, but for this fall festival I chose to keep it simple and keep it to the slow dancing competition. So the last couple standing gets a free interior design of one of their rooms. Unfortunately, I lost some of that footage at the end. Uh, so I can just tell you that Jason and Lorraine won that one. They were the last couple standing. And we will be starting off the decoration series with their home. Behind the bar, we see Melissa, one of the romance sims in town. She hasn't seen that much romance yet and I'm kind of starting to feel sorry for her. She was really tired and bored from teaching at the elementary school because it is something that is so far from her character to do. So she went on this date with Rick, but that turned out to be like the most boring date in history. Partly because I didn't want to meddle at that point. After I saw that Rick approached her by himself and started flirting with her again. I figured that since they are both romance sims, it is completely within their wants to get together, so I am absolutely allowed to meddle in this. And I did. I tried to make them slow dance together today, but I guess she just really is not into him at all, because she quickly stepped away from him again after a really, really short while. So even though he now has a crush on her, I guess it is just not going to happen with these two romance sims. So here we see Rick walking away all disappointed and Melissa complaining that she's way too tired to stay at this festival. And then we see Ricky approaching her. I guess he is just going to thank her for teaching him this season. And I've always hoped that Lizzie and Ricky would get together, but uh, it hasn't really turned into more than just a good friendship. And here we see that Melissa is walking up to Daniel, I guess to compliment him on his play. Funny thing is that she is his ex-girlfriend. They were together when they were teenagers. So they have quite a bit of history together, even though they split up before they went to college and they both have had several relationships since college. And Adriana rushes to the stage, <laughs> shoes her away, <laughs> because of course she is not going to let his ex-girlfriend get close to Daniel because she really just fell in love with him and uh, she is not going to let another woman get his attention because she knows all too well what Daniel is like and uh, that he would uh, be tempted to get together with Melissa again. If you've stuck around this far thank you so much for watching it's been so fun to play this festival and that mainly is because it is so much fun to see all 24 sims well 27 if you count Gordon, Lizzie and Ricky but uh, yeah it's been so fun watching all of them get together on this lot. Here we see the last couple forming, it's uh, Kate and Jessica. I've always kind of wanted them to get together, but I didn't influence anything. So it was such a nice surprise to see that they are actually very much attracted to each other and found each other at the festival all on their own. With Kate being the local police officer and Jessica owning the casino, this has to be one of my favorite couples in town. And the last person that we have not mentioned yet during this day is Linda. We've only seen her as a member of the commercial committee during their first meeting. She is the daughter of Gordon and owns a bed and breakfast in town. She's been flirting with Vernon, but also is very attracted to Eduardo. 
So I guess the next season will tell us what is going to happen there. So as we watch these sims dance until the night falls, we have reached the end of the fall festival and the end of the first season. This season has been all about setting up, finding partners for all these brand new and single sims. So we've seen a lot of romance. The next season will be a cozy winter season, where of course the next five years of these sims will show how their lives are going to develop. And after that, we start the spring season, where eight new sims are scheduled to arrive. Now that might still up this community in some unexpected ways. Also, I've had to let go of the initial plan for an exact order of rotational gameplay, because playing a single sim household with no job or friends yet just got really boring really quickly in my opinion. I did make sure that all of the households are played for the same number of days, so their ages still all line up, and in future seasons we might go back to showing that rotational gameplay again. So, 8 more sims are scheduled to move into this town very very soon, because when I first started to plan this neighborhood, I worked out 32 unique DNA sets in an Excel sheet. So we would have 8 skin 1s, 8 skin 2s, 8 skin 3s, and 8 skin 4s, but also an even spread of all of the eye colors, hair colors, and aspirations and stuff. And we are still missing 8 of those sims from the initial plan, mainly because their jobs were not essential right at the start and also because I just couldn't wait to start playing and working out all of the details of a unique sim it just takes some time for me so they are scheduled to arrive in spring which gives us a little bit of time to prepare the town for their arrival for now as always thank you so much for watching like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to join us for the winter and spring season mm -hmm.